Uh, I lost a bet with Joe Dante about the innocent. Why? Because I said you'd never, ever see the ghost. But in fact, you do. You do, you do, yeah. yeah. I <laughs> was wrong. How many people like the ending? What? <laughs> I, was, I, I was dissatisfied. I was really into the movie, and I thought, what? <laughs> Wait. Oh. How would have you done, ended it? What? How would have you ended it? Well, you... I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I just saw it. I think I'd make, I think there's an opportunity for another really scary thing. The question is, does she get, get away or not? Sam Raimi made a movie called Drag Me to Hell, yeah. which is essentially a remake of... No, and Nigel Neal, Nigel Neal wrote it? Night of the Demon. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what's interesting was, that's the end of the movie. She gets dragged to hell. And that is an economic decision. They, you know, they went, wait a minute, she got dragged to hell? Okay, we'll take 30 million off your box office. <laughs> because the audience that went to see it went, oh, we liked her. So I don't, I agree that I, I don't, I wouldn't want you necessarily get dragged to, to hell. Get, yeah, <laughs> taken, but. I don't know. I just went, oh. But do you remember the head was still there? So you don't know. Yeah. She lost I mean, the head. No, that's the, my point. The, Clearly, the, you're the, not, you didn't get a get away. The, the end is like always. You meant showed to the be book loaded. again. Yeah, but it's, isn't it better to always show less than too much and like, I don't know. Um, yeah. That's, that's do you know I Stuart, yeah. a director named Stuart Gordon? Yeah. Sorry? Do you know Stuart Gordon? Story. Stuart. Gordon, he's a filmmaker, he made uh, Reanimator. Oh, yeah, 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 made, yeah, yes. There's a famous thing where, uh, there's a famous quote of Sam Goldwyn, which is, less is more. And that's what you just said, less is more. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart said to me, no, more is more! <laughs> <laughs> which, if you've seen that movie, it makes sense. It the, is, the most, yeah. the, this is going to sound odd, but the moment that I personally like the best, because it was so interesting to me, was when, she gets, grabs her daughter and gets out and she's driving and the, the guys stop her and they're the religious police. Yeah. You know and it was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, she gets arrested. And I was yeah. interested the way you, you know, she's working out to Jane Fonda and she's obviously very forward but has to put on the scar. Yeah, you have the, the threat of the bombing. That's what interested me the most is especially, I've spent years in London and you, and it's just the idea of, about to be bombed is yeah. terrifying and going to keep going down the, 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 the school, the medical school head guy is telling you, you, you can't. can't, you just, you, he didn't even look, notice out the window, a huge explosion <laughs> over there. Yeah. He and nothing is, it was it, like, yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Your character <laughs> made me think of really, do you remember the, the feral, what the hell's his name? Feral, the singer, um, ha get happy. Yeah. For, yeah. It what, is. What, what's it called? Whatever. And That's people were making <laughs> people were making videos all around the world of singing that. Yeah. And those got young people made it in Tehran. In Tehran, they got arrested. And they got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see that video? Yeah. It was interesting because you'd think it was Palm Springs or something. I mean, they were so Western. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just they got in deep shit. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Just for being happy. Yeah. Yeah, what's interesting about it to me is it's, it's definitely set in Tehran. It's definitely Iranian. But the tropes are all, I mean, it's very traditionally gothic, scary film. And for me, the moment that I went, oh, shit, is when she threw away that whatever it was, because clearly that was a mistake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank the, you. The, you know, the cat fur. This yeah. is going to protect me. Yeah. Christopher Thanks. Lee, the actor Chris Lee, he told me that when he saw Frankenstein, the original, which he saw in first release, he, you know, um, he said that literally for four years, four or five years, he was like eight. He, he had a parent had to be in the room till he fell asleep because he was convinced that when he woke up, you know, Karloff would be there standing at the end of the bed. Yeah. And then yes. many years later, they were neighbors. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's so and, amazing. And uh, Boris was very amused. Yeah, I love this guy. I mean, I love the idea of, for my first movie, I want it to be in Farsi. Because, I mean, you must have gotten a lot of, are you 
Sure. Oh, a lot. I mean, like people even close to me were like, uh, "That's it's not a good idea, man. Like, shelf it. Like, you know, maybe later." Who's an interesting character is the little boy whose family was killed. Yeah. And that's actually, I take it back, not throwing away the thing. My favorite thing was when she was driving, and he spoke, but did he? So yeah. nothing, but this is my favorite Iranian story. Please. Please. Have to because this is having made work with a lot of Iranians and Persians. Like I, my favorite one is when the Shah was overthrown and the Ayatollah took power. Um, after a few years, Salman Rushdie wrote a book called The Satanic Verses. And the, the Ayatollah, who I'm sure never read it, felt it was blasphemous, insulting to uh, Muhammad, and he, and, Allah, and he f issued a fatwa. And he said, I want the 50th deadliest assassins in all of Persia, the entire country, the best killers, even from prisons, I don't care. I want them all brought here. And they all come, and they all have daggers and swords and guns. And, you know. and the Ayatollah says, I want you to go to Salman Rushdie, and I want you to murder him, and I want you to slice his body in a thousand pieces. And all the assassins, Salam and Banyan, on their way out. And just before they leave, he says, wait, wait. And they all turn back, he says, I also want you to find out who wrote Police Academy 5. <laughs> sorry. Is that? That's a Hollywood joke, I'm sorry. <laughs>